you know, Japan invaded Luchu in 1879, did horrible things to the Luchuan people, um, including a genocide in 1945, where one third of the Okinawan population was murdered in just three months. And since 1972, Luchuans have lived under joint U.S. and Japanese occupation. Um, Luchuans ha have suffered from uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers committing violent crimes against women, children, the elderly. Uh, and violent crimes, we're talking about rape, murder, you know, uh, assault, things like that. They, they don't care about the lives of, of Luchuans. Uh, in fact, if, if Luchuans were to die out as a, a people group, as a nation, uh, the U.S. and Japan would rejoice. They would be glad. They would be very happy because then they could use all of our islands for themselves to use for military bases and tourist resorts, you know, and they would no longer have Luchuans like us to criticize them and to protest against them. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk It Out with me. I'm Li Jingjing. And this show aims to show you the different voices and the stories that are often being neglected by Western mainstream media. The United States have hundreds of military bases in the whole Indo-Pacific region. It's on Okinawa, on Guam, on Marshall Islands, on the Philippines, everywhere. But are those military bases bring any good to those countries, to those regions? Absolutely no. It brought atrocities, crimes towards the local people. And today, I have a guest gonna tell us more about it. So joining me today is Rob Kajivara. Joining me from Luchu, he's a native Okinawan. So welcome, Rob. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. So before we continue to discuss these uh, aggressions, imperious aggressions towards the indigenous people in Okinawa, uh, first, can you tell our viewers about more about yourself and your work? Yes, yes. So I'm uh, Robert Kajiwara, uh, also known by my uh, uh, Luchuan name, uh, Fija Takamasa, or my Chinese name, Wei Xiao Chang. Uh, mm. Historically, historically, Luchuans. Uh, had both the native Luchuan name as well as a Chinese name. Uh, that is something that uh, we are trying to revive. Um, so yes, I am a native Luchuan, also known as Okinawan. Um, uh, Luchu is the historical native name for our, our country. Uh, Okinawa is actually not even a native Okinawan name. Uh, it's, it was created by the Japanese after they invaded. Uh, in 1879. Um, so yes, I am native Luchuan. Uh, uh, I, I'm president of the Peace for Okinawa Coalition, uh, headquartered in Okinawa City. Uh, our mission is to promote Luchuan uh, culture, history, language, and rights. From time to time, local people in Okinawa will protest against the U.S. military bases in Okinawa. Uh, quite often, actually, there are always some protests, right? Their sign said our anger has reached its limit. Marines out. And they made sure nothing was lost in translation. We have been enduring cruel treatment for 70 years. I think no one knows this better than you as a, as a local people there. So can you tell us what really happened in Okinawa? Yeah, yeah. So um, we are trying to promote local Luchuan or Okinawan voices because so often it's the Americans right, the Westerners and the Japanese voices who are speaking for and over the voices of Luchuans or Okinawans, right? And so their perspective is very different from the native perspective, in, in, you know, a lot of the times. Luchuans have been protesting the U.S. and Japan military occupation of our islands every day, every single day, uh, for generations this is <laughs> this has been going on on a daily basis so it's not mm -hmm. it's not from time to time it's daily um some some there are many different locations um in the luchu islands where daily protests have been occurring 
for decades. You know, Japan invaded Luchu in 1879. Prior to that, Luchu was a wealthy and successful independent country. Okay, so Japan invaded in 1879, uh, did horrible things to the Luchuan people, um, including a genocide in 1945, where one third of the Okinawan population was murdered in just three months, you know, just killed in three months. One third, again, it's a huge number, huge, huge wow. percentage of our population killed. Most people don't even know this, right? Uh, and then 1945, the, the U.S. took over. And for, so from 1945 until 1972, Luchuans lived under direct U.S. military rule. And then in 1972, the, the United States gave uh, Luchu to Japan. And since 1972, Luchuans have lived under joint U.S. and Japanese occupation. The U.S. and Japan, they cause so much harm to Luchuans on a daily basis in um, just numerous ways. You mentioned the crimes committed by U.S. soldiers. Uh, yes, of course, that's a, a very major concern. Um, Luchuans ha have suffered from uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers committing violent crimes against women, children, the elderly, uh, and violent crimes. We're talking about rape, murder, you know, uh, assault, things like that. And there have been cases where Luchuan men have tried to protect the women and children from these soldiers. And so what do the U.S. soldiers do? They just shoot the men, too. You know, they, they just kill the men. Remember, U.S. soldiers have guns, okay? We don't. <laughs> We're completely unarmed. But it's not just crime. Um, it's also environmental damage, uh, harm to our land and sea. Um, it's, um, it's economic deprivation. Okay. Uh, the military bases in Okinawa uh, take up around 15% of Okinawa's land and around 30% of the arable or best lands, yet they contribute only around 5% to the local Okinawan economy. So it's running at a huge deficit. It's a tremendous economic burden on the Okinawan people. So um, a, lot of Amer a lot of people in general don't realize this. Americans, they think very highly of themselves and they, they assume that, um, Okinawans benefit economically from the military bases. This is not true at all. Uh, so economic deprivation, that is a major human rights violation. Um, and it's also an indicator of genocide, according to the United Nations. So, uh, you know, if you suppress our economy, then we won't be able to rise up and restore our independence, our, our right to self-determination. So. Everything from crime to uh, pollution, um, in environmental damage, economic uh, deprivation, uh, not to mention the space, right? Uh, Luchuans, Luchuans don't want to live near military bases. Who, who wants to live near a military base? Can you imagine whatever city uh, your viewers or anyone watching this, whatever city or town you live in, can you just imagine for a moment a, a huge foreign military base in the middle of your city or town. Not off to the side, but right in the middle of downtown. Can you imagine that? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and can you imagine all the problems that would cause on a daily basis? I mean, it's just astounding. They don't want it. So that's why they put their military bases in other parts of the world, in other countries. Actually, I have a video that with the Rob already explained the history uh, of Okinawa and the connections between uh, China and Luchu. Since time immemorial, Okinawa was an independent nation known as Luchu with its own unique culture, history, languages, values, and identity. Luchu maintained close, friendly relations with China, Korea, and Southeast Asia. 
Luchu prospered as a center of international trade, finance, and cross-cultural exchange, and was the chief facilitator of a large and highly influential maritime trade network that stretched throughout Asia. Luchu was highly respected by other peoples around the world, including Westerners, who marveled at how a small nation such as Luchu was able to build a prosperous society where poverty was virtually non-existent. During the 19th century, Luchu became recognized by the international community as an independent country via the signing of treaties with the United States, France, and the Netherlands. In 1879, Japan used its new modern Western-style military to invade and illegally annex Luchu. This would be the first of Japan's many imperialist conquests through World War II. As Japan began to lose the war, it deliberately placed an inordinate amount of military presence onto Okinawa Island with the intent of sacrificing Okinawans in order to protect the Japanese homeland. This resulted in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, in which roughly one-third of the indigenous Okinawan population was killed during a time span of just around three months. Japanese soldiers used the battle as a cover-up in order to deliberately murder Okinawan civilians, particularly those they caught speaking the native Okinawan language, as well as Luchu independence leaders. Japanese soldiers also used Okinawans as human shields and forcibly conscripted Okinawan civilians into the battlefield including women and children. After the war, most of Japan's other colonies regained their independence, but not Luchu. Instead, the United States decided to keep Luchu for itself to use for military bases. The United States military forcefully relocated thousands of Luchuans from their ancestral homes and imprisoned those who resisted in order to build these military bases. The United States also released convicted Japanese Class A war criminals such as Nobusuke Kishi because they believed he would lead Japan in a pro-America direction, which is exactly what he did. He would go on to become prime minister. Kishi's grandson, Shinzo Abe, continues the fascist legacy of his grandfather. He and numerous other Japanese politicians are continuously pushing Japan further into a right-wing, neoconservative, imperialist, and fascist direction. Not only are they trying to revive Japan's military strength, but they are also rewriting history, including Japan's textbooks, in order to cover up Japan's war crimes. For this reason, many of the younger generations in Japan today are completely unaware of Japan's dark past as an imperialist aggressor and are under the belief that Japan did nothing wrong. This is a grave concern for many Okinawans because although Okinawa makes up less than 1% of Japan's land area, it contains over 70% of Japan's military presence. Which of course means that Okinawa could once again very well be devastated in the event of a conflict. From 1945 through 1972, Luchu was under direct U.S. military rule, which meant that it also missed out on the decades of economic growth that Japan experienced during the 50s and 60s. Luchuans strongly resisted being under U.S. military rule, so in 1972, the U.S. gave Luchu to Japan without a vote from Luchuans in a move that is very much illegal under international law. And today, Luchu remains under joint occupation by both the United States and Japan, both of whom commit major human rights violations against indigenous Luchuans on a daily basis. The military takes up around 15% of Okinawa's land and around 30% of its arable or best lands, but contributes only around 5% to Okinawa's economy, running at a huge deficit. This is, of course, a tremendous economic burden on the Okinawan people, many of whom are forced to work two or three jobs just to get by. Okinawa maintains a very high child poverty rate at around 25%. The U.S. military commits numerous crimes against Okinawan civilians, particularly violent crime against women and children. 
The United States military is also responsible for tremendous environmental destruction in Okinawa, including the current construction of another U.S. military base in the northern part of Okinawa at a location called Hinoko. The base's construction is destroying an ancient coral reef home to hundreds of rare and endangered species, including the Okinawa dugong. In February 2019, the Okinawan people held a referendum in which the overwhelming majority voted against the construction of this base, and yet both the United States and Japan governments simply ignored the referendum and are continuing to build the base anyway. To make matters worse, the U.S. military has also poisoned Okinawa's water with cancer-causing chemicals, forcing thousands of Okinawans to buy bottled water. The U.S. and Japan governments claim that this heavy military presence is necessary in order to protect Okinawans from China. However, very few people believe that, and even the U.S. government has privately admitted that Okinawans do not see China as a threat. We know this via WikiLeaks, and it was published in the Wall Street Journal. I've done several videos in the past talking about Okinawa's relationship with China. Please check those out if you are interested in learning more. I will, however, say that China and Okinawa have always had very positive, friendly, and mutually beneficial relations. This dates back even to ancient times. China has never once harmed Okinawa or Luchu in any way, and actually China has helped Luchu in many ways. Whereas Japan tries to rewrite history and tries to cover up Luchu's glorious past as an independent nation, China has rightfully acknowledged Luchu's history. And even recently at the United Nations, China played an instrumental role in helping pass a resolution that is being referred to as the Legacies of Colonialism. This resolution is very important and is being applauded by Luchuans and other oppressed peoples around the world who have experienced the harmful impact of Western imperialism. So, no, China is not a threat to Luchu, Hawaii, Guam, or any other nation in the Pacific. Rather, China offers an opportunity at multipolarity, an opportunity to expand our business, trade, and cross-cultural relations in mutually beneficial ways. This is what I and many others believe we should be doing not only with China, but with many other nations around the world. This is how we can build a more peaceful and prosperous society. They are using Okinawa and sacrificing the life of Okinawans to achieve their aggression network. I mean, what, how, I wonder what do you make of this whole U.S. imperialist goal for their own benefits? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely, they're tr just trying to extend U.S. imperialism and hegemony. Right? It's the military industrial complex. They're making a lot of money. Uh, off of this. The local people are not making the money, right? Average ordinary people are not making any money from this, right? It's it's uh, the elites in the military industrial complex who are making a lot of money from this. Uh, so, and the US and Japan, they both openly state, like, this is all about containing China. You, you, you briefly mentioned uh, the, the cancer-causing uh, chemicals that that u.s military uh bases often uh provide yeah the same thing happened in luchu um recently uh the, the u.s military has poisoned luchu's water and in, in many places um so this has been a grave concern to luchuans meanwhile the u.s military they couldn't care less they couldn't care less at all of course uh and so, but if your water is poisoned, you know, water is necessary for sustaining life. So if your water is poisoned, you can't live, right? And so of course, of course, um, many Luchuans are saying, well, this is clearly genocide, right? They're, they're literally trying to kill us. Um, in 1945, the Battle of Okinawa, uh, the US and Japan, they destroyed Okinawa. They killed one third of the um, Okinawan population. Okay. The battle only lasted three months, and yet one third of the uh, population was killed. Uh, so they 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 don't care about the lives of of Luchuans. Uh, in fact, 
if if Luchuans were to die out as a, a people group, as a nation, uh, the U.S. and Japan would rejoice. They would be glad. They would be very happy because then they could use all of our islands for themselves to use for military bases and tourist resorts, you know, and they would no longer have Luchuans like us to criticize them and to protest against them. You see what I'm saying? So uh, if if the U.S. and Japan have another opportunity to just annihilate Luchuans, they would absolutely take it in a heartbeat. Absolutely. They keep saying how much they care about people in Taiwan Island, even though like people in Taiwan are Chinese. They speak Chinese, they practice Chinese culture. Um, everything is very Chinese. But they say they care about the culture of people in Taiwan Island. But then they were ignoring what happened to locals in Hawaii. I mean, what about Hawaiians? Why are you not caring about their human rights and their culture? You're literally almost erasing their people, their culture, their language. And they also have military bases in Hawaii. Yes, yes, a very large military presence in Hawaii. So a lot of people around the world, they don't realize the history of Hawaii. Uh, so actually, the history of Hawaii is very similar to the history of Luchu, very similar. Hawaii was an independent country, a highly respected independent country um, until 1893, when a small group of, of uh, white insurgents um, collaborate, they conspired with the, the U.S. Uh, ambassador to Hawaii uh, and the U.S. Marines to illegally invade and overthrow the, the, the rightful Hawaiian kingdom government. So and, and then the United States, uh, they wanted to annex Hawaii to use for military bases to expand, uh, you know, to expand towards towards Asia. Uh, and so, but they couldn't do that because the Hawaiian people, 90% of the Hawaiian people uh, opposed annexation. They signed petitions uh, opposing U.S. annexation and, and supporting the restoration of the Hawaiian kingdom government. Uh, uh, and so what did the United States do? They just ignored the petitions and they illegally annexed Hawaii against the, the will of the people. The U.S. Uh, to this day never legally annexed Hawaii. They did it through fraud. They they simply said, "Well, <laughs> we're we're just gonna we're just gonna keep Hawaii for ourselves, and that's it." Okay, it's it's, it's complete fraud. So, um, basically, Luchuans, Hawaiians. Chamorro and uh, Native Americans, uh, specifically Native Alaskans, uh, the four of us have come together and we've sort of formed our own uh, unofficial coalition of sorts, uh, opposing the U.S. military and supporting the restoration of our rightful independence. 